team that tends to bleed blue. And Empire is going to need them to bleed over the next two games. As we'll head into Oregon, a map that managed to get through the map ban phase, and EG must show some comfort on here. They knew that they were going to be playing Immortals here yesterday, and now they'll be playing on it yet again. First ban coming out from Team Empire is going to be on Amante, and they don't want to deal with any shields, and unsurprisingly, there goes Capitao from EG. Yeah, it seems like Capitao's going to be a perm ban there for Evil Geniuses against Team Empire. Sensible is the word I would use to describe that action by EG. The Montaigne in the same exact realm, <laughs> very smart. Montaigne is a tool that EG have been using very well at this tournament, especially Canadian. He's just been really doing well on that Montaigne. Maestro getting taken out here by Evil Geniuses. Is that their last ban? And here we go, Team Empire get rid of Mira. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I mean, I think they've banned Mira every single map so far. And I, I, I had to, I had to fact check that, but I'm pretty sure it's consistent. Now, with this, that means that we will have an echo in play, which is not common, not in this match anyway. We saw echo ban last map by Evil Geniuses, and they switched it up to Maestro. Clearly, change of mentality there for EG. Looks like it's going to be a top floor defense here for Empire to start things off. The crowd is getting hyped up, rightfully so. Dorms is not that peculiar to start off on. No, it's not, of course not. I mean, basement or dorms, either one, you're you're good. Tower, then we start going, oh, look at that, that's interesting. Kitchen, then we start going, wow, that's hmm, interesting. But uh, yeah, top floor, basement, you're, you're still very much in the comfort zone when it comes to Oregon. Empire just going to set themselves up here on that site. They are bringing the Echo. So this is what was not allowed in the last map as it was banned. Left unbanned by EG this time around. Very interesting. We'll see how this changes the dynamic of defense for Empire. Oh, and you know what else is not banned? What's not banned? A glance. Oh, and it'll be played right away? Yeah. Canadian on that roll, though. You've got a couple people on EG that can fulfill the role of Glaz, who, yeah. if you watch the reveal panel, you'll see that he's going to be changed a little bit. But they haven't gone into effect yet, so you can still continue to push pretty much, I, I would use the word uh, unabated. Yeah, push um, ridiculously through your own smokes and see everybody. Mm -hmm. um, that's going away. I can't wait for that. Now, instead of banning the Glaz, Empire banned the Montaigne. Okay, so you can't... You can't do it right, right? If you're if you're evil, if you're Empire, you're either banning one or the other. You can't do both, so you have to uh, you have to take what you get. And uh, Evil Genius is likely going to make full use of that glass. They've always been a team that is good at setting up a glass on an angle to just win fights. The way that Empire is going to attack here whenever they are on attack is they're going to clear through tower first. And it doesn't appear to be the way that EG is going to play this one out at all. But man, Joystick's in a position where he might be able to see the head of Canadian. It, it would be a tough shot to make. He gets droned out a small tower, though. And in pursuit, there's Necrox. Cannot in win an engagement. Joystick will get away with a tiny bit of HP lost. But for their trouble, EG losing about a minute in that process, while the rest of the team is likely still trying to figure out where the members of Empire are. It's been a great crowd all weekend. It certainly has, Parker. And it's been absolutely fantastic for these finals, as is deserving for these teams. Evil Genius is still setting up their attack. Looks like they're going to be setting up for a master take slash west window. They got the glass set up on west window. That's a really safe place to have. Oh, and this is beautiful. Young has opened up the locker's wall. That's going to allow for him to watch the bottom of white stairs. And it seems like EG actually, they want to clear out underneath. Ooh, dancing with death is young, but he will survive. They nearly lost his head. It does appear that Joystick might be down inside of the cafeteria slash dining hall looking to go for a run out. And if there's nobody there from EG committed to this, then he could be in danger. But no, nope, there you go, inside a dining hall, it'll be EG taking full control of that. And Joystick, very limited HP. As once again, he had been put in that engagement, as you said. This setup from EG is beautiful. Necrox has the flank. Joystick can't go anywhere. He doesn't have the ability to set up a rotation. They're definitely going to start clearing out ADSs, and there's the nade! 
They just beautifully executed onto Kitchen. That was about as calculated as it gets. Karzeka is still inside of Classroom, and he might actually be able to wreak some havoc if he goes unnoticed. But overall, beautiful clear there up the bottom or middle floor from EG. Canadian just missing his shots ever so slightly, and Geo gets taken down from Dan, but Karzeka will finish him off. EG's now inside of sight, and Young will just persevere amidst the smoke. He's got the smoke right next to him. He'll waltz in, but no, the shotgun of Shepard will shut him down. Trade it off with the PMM out of Canadian, and EG will take the first round. What a beautiful round from Evil Geniuses. And the last kill on a Claymore. That Claymore was inside of Kitchen slash Cafeteria on the doorway instead of going through the rotation that made by the thermite hole, um, hole thermite breach rather. Uh, Kozak had decided to use the door. It didn't check for the laser. Unfortunate if you are an Empire fan. But yeah, that was a great execution from Evil Geniuses. You really got to hand it to them. They set up and knocked down the roamers downstairs perfectly. Followed that up with just a straight rush in through West Window. <laughs> they didn't need North Window pressure, it seemed, to deal with anybody in dorms and everything worked out great, if you're evil geniuses. On the other hand, Empire, a little bit shaky there. I know a lot of people expect Empire to be able to take Organ going into the, these finals, and that's why a lot of people would expect this to go to map number three clubhouse. That first round is a really good sign from Evil Geniuses. Consensus among North America and a lot of the people that play against them is that EG tends to be one of the best Oregon teams in the whole world. They're certainly, I would say, the best team in North America when it comes to Oregon in terms of international success and regional success as well. But the best team in the whole world right now at Oregon is probably Team Empire. That's the thing. And to have EG be able to match up against them, depending on what happens over the next couple rounds, will give you a better example of how prepared EG was for this matchup. You know that Empire are very strong on three maps, Consulate, Oregon, and Coastline. You can only ban one of them, and Empire will immediately pick the other. Where do you want to go? EG decided to ban Consulate, which makes a lot of sense. Coastline and Oregon tend to be very strong maps for EG, Consulate less so. And then, additionally, you have Clubhouse as your tiebreaker, which EG is not bad on by any stretch of the imagination. But neither are Empire. And I mean, Clubhouse getting through, as the analyst desk showed, they were gobsmacked by the fact that Fnatic received the 7-0 drubbing at the hands of Empire, and, then... and yet EG let it go through the ban phase when they very easily could have banned it out. It was definitely an interesting play by Evil Geniuses, but I'm guessing they were just thinking to themselves, we're not gonna let that happen to us. And, well, maybe they won't. I mean, based on what we've seen on Oregon, we might not even get there. It's only one round in, though. Way too early to call. <laughs> Again, it will be a top floor defense from Team Empire. And Evil Geniuses have decided to go with a different strategy. Love the fact that they're adjusting so quickly. Necrox is gonna get, yeah, that's a free pick right there on Scyther, who decided to peek one of the north windows. Yeah, and on those double windows inside of dorms, the problem is, is that when there's a Capitao on the board, it's very challenging to hold those because of the way that the asphyxiating bolts from Capitao go down. But he's been banned out here. Number one, because evil geniuses likely have a way around a Capitao being on the board, but additionally, you know how strong he tends to be in the hands of Team Empire. There's two different players on Empire that can run a Capitao, and, well, one of them happens to be Joystick, who's dead. Necrox with a second kill. It'll be an easy clear. Karzeka on the roam will take out NVK. He's inside a meeting hall, and, well, Necrox will fall off of the drone just in case Karzeka decides to wander his way through meeting hall in towards the pantry, whether it's reinforced or not. That's information that EG might not have at their disposal. Necrox gets cut down to size by Shepard, though, likely playing from above down below the kids' dorms in the line of sight beneath him. Also, you've got Karzeka now over by Big Tower, and while it's an MP7, that might not be the best at the longest of ranges, doesn't have an optical to suit it, it can still do quite a bit of damage. Karzeka's roams have been amazing so far. He has been the saving grace of, of Empire for both of these rounds. Yeah, they didn't win the last round, but he was in the position to potentially win it for them. He is in the position to potentially win it again! A beautiful shot onto Canadian, and that's gonna give Team Empire the man advantage. Very important kill just now. You can see that evil geniuses are starting to hesitate. They've got 30 seconds, yes, thanks to their great efficiency on this attack, but can they make this execution happen? The goo traps are gonna make Geo's life really miserable. Young will be eliminated, making it just Geo against three. He finds one, he's gonna find two more. Pushing through the smoke with the goo trap and it's not gonna happen. Shepard shuts him down and here we go. 1-1, one, one. first round there for Empire.
And ultimately what it came down to was Karzeka. Yes. Karzeka almost single-handedly saving that round, if not entirely saving that round for his team on that unpredictability. Channeling the strategy that Fnatic had used and a lot of teams used, which is in the mid-round, you head for the hills and you just find yourself in positions that your opponents aren't aware of. Absolutely agree with you. Karzeka, great round there for him individually. You know, following those tracers, there you go. It was a good holdout from Empire, a round that looked to have started to go the way of Evil Geniuses based on those two early picks from Necrox, but just slipped out of their grasp. It's a beautiful job there to both teams, honestly. And this is what you get, the finals of the finals of Season 9, the top of Siege. Dare they call it the cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. The cream always rises to the top. It's true. It does do that, yeah. But. So, Laundry Supply Room being the usual site for most teams to start off on, though Dorms does tend to come in there too. And it will be the second, well, second total, third in the round count. <laughs> and it's going to be, I think, a very comfortable place for Team Empire. They don't have a mirror window, but of course they're used to that, as they ban Mira pretty much all the time. Looks like Empire's going to be committing to a very heavy west side roam. Utility invested players positioned and ready to receive evil geniuses on the roam clear should it come it's not necessarily a given evil geniuses are good at reading the setup from their opponent and going for a different tank altogether and eg looks to want to take from construction and tower if that is the take that eg commits to then they will have well they won't have to deal with a west side roam it'd be wasted effort from team empire we've seen that before we saw it on bank by the server stairs no Hibana as well means that the push that's going to come out from EG will only be able to get two of those hatches, presumably the one inside of the main lobby. And then, what do you think? You think the hallway or... The hallway. You think it'll be hallway? They're both actually open right now, but if, if they were reinforced, I would open the hallway. I mean, if you're going to commit this hard to a meeting hall hold, or even upstairs in Attic, which is where Geospot's one member of Empire, you got to have an escape hatch, and that's exactly what it's going to be. Joystick's still in a position where he's going to be able to win almost any heads-up gunfight. He's also sitting on top of an ADS. He's got Dan down beneath him. So the Mute is going to find another drone. And this information denial that's going to come out from the Mute Jammers might prove to be tough for EG to engage. They know the Joystick is still in there as the Tracers will fly by the head of Geo. Pushing open a window trying to alleviate some of this pressure as Joystick will now decide to head out of Attic. Putting up a small kill hole for himself should he need it. Probably the right call here for Joystick to play a little bit passive and fall back. Evil Geniuses do have tower control, but they're not going to force the engagement with Joystick. They know he's capable of hitting those shots. EG are very wary of executing, given the fact that they don't know where Karzeka is as well. So three bodies from Empire that are all deeply off-site. And, I mean, you can go for broke, and you can push on in. But the problem is, is that you do so at your own peril. A lot of teams will begin to execute and then get completely run over by the retake that comes out. There's actually four bodies now, as it appears that Scyther is up top too. So this might only leave Shepard on site all by his lonesome. That can prove to be quite damning in the latter part of a round. I don't know what Canadian is doing there, as he can't shoot the castle barricades anymore. Geo will open it up, and oh, he'll be able to take Dan down, and Geo should be safe for the time being, as Karzeka will try to get back to site as fast as he can. He's at three speed, he'll go through the main lobby, and there might be somebody to catch him out, as Geo will crawl to safety, and 40 seconds left will set them up in perfect position. MVK does find Joystick, and it's once again likely going to come down to Karzeka and the impact that he can have on this round. You can see the Castle Barricades were set up in, the, in expecting this eventuality of the take from Evil Geniuses, but it is not going to be an impediment thanks to the Sledge. 25 seconds left, Canadian can still see through those smokes, and he's going to hold on to the hallway. Necrox going for the plant, and he's going to stick it. He's got cover from Geo. Empire doing their best with the gas canisters, but they're not ticking away at Necrox. A plant will go down. With a man advantage, this looks unwinnable for Empire, but Karzeka is going to try and correct that by taking down MVK, the flank watch in meeting hall. Two players pushing from downstairs, one upstairs from Empire. Empire, Scyther and Shepard doing their best to retake their own site. Young is going to finally shut down that flank of Karzeka, and it's just the two defenders, the anchors on site, and they'll be shut down by Evil Geniuses. A beautiful execution straight into B, and a plant on default plant spot. Great execution, and Karzeka almost breaking the back of EG on that defense. If it weren't for the fact that you had Young dedicated to flank watch, everybody else from EG was too preoccupied with what was going on with both Scyther and Shepard, trying to ensure that nobody went for the disable onto that diffuser, which had been planted just beside the bomb. Ultimately, 
ruthless aggression and a lot of precision from EG there. Really, most of it falling into the hands of Canadian after EG had taken this map control that they had so desired. Inside a meeting hall, there's Karzeka taking down NVK, but he wouldn't be able to do all that much left as he would young very far up inside of Attic. You have to give a lot of praise to Canadian because if it weren't for that reactive shot, once the castle barricade disappeared, well, what ends up happening? Dan kills Geo, Canadian likely misses his shots, and even if you still do get Dan, you have Geo removed from the equation. In this case, the, Dan, but the down but not out was for Geo, a saver, and for EG too, because you had the sledge to be able to open up another castle barricade, frag grenades there, and then another gun just to watch from afar. You get kind of boxed in as the site downstairs in Oregon is a bit claustrophobic. So don't expect an easy rotate out of laundry or supply when you find yourself at a disadvantage when it comes to numbers. Because Dorms is locked for yet another round and tower and kitchen don't tend to be places that the defense like to play, it'll be another laundry and supply room defense for Empire, who'll change things up. Dan will be off of mute and he'll be onto the Kaid, but everything else will be the same. It was a heavy investment inside a meeting hall that stalled EG out quite a bit, but once EG did get it open, the dominoes begin to fall. How much of an investment is Empire going to have? As last time, they had four bodies off-site. I expect a bit more of a conservative play from them. Dan has brought the Kaid in an effort to hold on to that meeting hall, try and deny the thermite exothermic charge that was coming from the tower, but it looks like EG are going to clear from an entirely different location this time around. This, now, see, this is where you want to have the West Rome, right? If you're Empire, and you do still have it, Karzeka oh, by dorms. He's going to be a very important force here for his team. Canadian already in kitchen. He does have an opponent above him, whether he knows it or not. That's Karzeka still inside of dorms. Geo is going to drone that out, though, I believe. He's going to look for the angle. Yes, indeed, he's waiting for an opportunity. They, EG need to commit fully to clearing out these roamers on the top floor if they actually want to go for a west side clear. Karzeka's going to give a lot of problems, and so is Joystick as he takes down NVK. That rotation through Attic working great for Team Empire. Geo's going to have to watch two separate angles here now. He's got a grenade primed and ready for the Ella. It's got Karzeka's name on it, and no! It will not go off. It'll ring the ears and a bit of tinnitus on the Ella, but that will be it. As it'll puzzlingly did not affect Karzeka whatsoever. Geo's in a major predicament now, though, because he's going to play this repel, and that frag grenade looks like it should be able to take Karzeka, but no! Oh my goodness, Karzeka's still surviving for the time being, as another member of EG will fall. This time it's Canadian on the Ash. A 5v3 with Empire on Laundry Supply Room, and most of this action has occurred off-site. It's going to buy a lot of time for Empire for when that EG push does happen, should it happen at all. It does seem like EG need to adjust their strategy, and it looks like they are going to do just that, appearing to adjust to a construction take. Necrox may be looking for a flank. That's probably the right call. You could stack all three of your players to take from construction, but if Necrox can come up from a flank, this is actually winnable. Young will take oh. down Dan in main lobby. Geo gets Shepard as well. EG are rallying right now, and Young is in sight. Necrox also hunted Joyce. What is happening? Young going for a diffuser plant. Scyther on low HP. Karzeka far from the site. He's going to have to come back, and Geo has the cover on lock. How did they get Beautiful. away with this? Necrox takes down Scyther, and it's just Karzeka in a 1v3. This is absolutely unbelievable. From a three versus five to a one versus three in the favor of evil geniuses now. A shutdown by Necrox. A beautiful play from evil geniuses. They just walk into sight. Whoever just made that call, as Geo was on repel, you knew you had two bodies off site. You look and you say, supply room is completely free. Let's break open the wall and just go in like a bulldozer. And that's exactly what happens. Geo rotates all the way down, and that's a masterful play from EG. I don't know if that was Canadian, I don't know if that was Geo, but massive props to whoever did that, as that could prove to be a very decisive round in the long run here. Wow. Yeah, that was just absolutely unbelievably. It was just. How did. How did Empire not stop that is the question. And again, there's that flank from Necrox that I talked about. You can push all of your players in through construction if you really want to, but if you run one of them through the laundry staircase, just one of them, then it sets you up to win the round. That one player inside of laundry, if left alone on the side of Empire, might have been able to salvage that round. 
if given an opportunity, but he wasn't because Necrox played it perfectly. He timed his push exactly when it needed to be. Got to hand it to him. It's a tactical timeout coming in from Empire here, and while they're going to do that to try and regain their composure, on Bank, when they called it map number one, they won the next three consecutive rounds without really breaking much of a sweat on them, too, if I do say so. Yeah. The problem with Empire now is that, well, Dorms has opened up, so you could conceivably see that, well, they have the benefit of the site working for them, but then they'll have to go back to Laundry likely after that unless they roll the die on either a kitchen or a tower defense, which is exceedingly unlikely. And where do you go from here? Well, then you switch sides, and EG will likely start on one of the Dorms Laundry sites themselves. So not just prepare yourself for the next two rounds, as EG did when they pulled their timeout at the exact same time, for the record, on bank. They took it in round number four, or round number five, rather, and then set themselves up for a side switch here. But Empire's gonna try to slow down the momentum of EG. And, it, I mean, it may work, but we'll see. Right now, it's looking like evil geniuses are just straight playing better. I mean, the strategy in that last round was really beautiful. I love that they didn't just consolidate their last three players and they split up. Most people wouldn't think to do that when you're at such a heavy disadvantage. And it's not just that. Just in general, evil genius is playing on a different level right now. Great to see, especially if you're an EUG fan. But just in general, if you're a fan of Siege. Now, Empire. They are definitely a super team. One of the, the definitely the youngest super team, to be sure, but they are one, and they have the capability to come back here. You cannot count them out, especially on a map like Oregon. Yes, Evil Genius is good here, but so is Empire. Just gotta give them a chance. And everything could change too when you switch sides, right? That's the yeah. other thing to keep in mind is that Empire could be so methodical on their attacks and just completely overwhelm Evil Geniuses that even if you do end this half with a four-round lead, which is what we tend to see, a four-two split then everything can change in the blink of an eye. Absolutely. Necrox doing his duty here and clearing out the Legion goo traps. That's fantastic to see with the IQ. That's going to open up a push onto white later on. However, uh, Dan will probably put another trap there. Just, just good efficiency from the IQ. A Nomad being brought as well from Evil Geniuses alongside Geo on the Ash this time instead of Canadian. So a small change here, just bringing a different kind of aggressiveness and also an ability to lock down where Empire is going to be. I mean, you're expecting that there likely will be a run out from dining at some point when you have to de attack this site because you find yourself vulnerable on those two windows. And with somebody like Joystick, and as we can see, there's a Valkyrie camera on the board. What's going to happen here? A possible run out. So Scyther will be looking for that as he tosses out a Nitro Cell and it won't find anything. There's more information that's going to be put out for the rest of his team as he just watches those two windows. And that's, wow, a push that's going to happen. Maybe no. It looked like Joystick was priming himself and readying himself for a run out, but no, there's gonna be a frag grenade get tossed in, and oh! Ooh. Down goes Scyther, he'll be on cam duty, and oh. Necrox is watching! Joystick will not be able to get out of the dining hall at all! Karzek is in a position to possibly go for a run out himself as he's taking up residency downstairs, but... Wow, that, that might have been a bait from Evil Jesus. It absolutely did look Because they had the camera outside, they didn't shoot it, and there goes Dan! Empire are falling apart right now. Evil Genius is looking to put it in a 4-1. They have 40 seconds to execute on two defenders. There is still, well, actually no, there is no C4 in the hand of the bandit. But Shepard's gonna take down Canadian, so here we go, Empire fighting back. Young's gonna get that plant though, just in sight. And that's by Dorms. Shepard and Generator trying to retake to the best of his ability, but he will be shut down by MVK. It's all on Karzeka. He's been a hero for this team in the past. In fact, the only round one was thanks to Karzeka. But can he really clutch in a 1v4? Make that a 1v3 as he takes down Geo. Beautiful pick there. But he's got a retake now, and the enemy knows exactly where Karzeka is. No C4 again in hand is such a detriment in this situation. Mark's coming out, clearly, based on that pre-fire through the floor. But no dice, and it's going to be a shutdown there by Necrox. Empire down 4-1 on Oregon of all maps. Evil Geniuses might take the title, surely, of best, play, uh, best team on Oregon if they win this. I mean, a lot of people were questioning it. It was, it was who's, the, who's really the best team on Oregon? Is it, is it Empire? Is it Evil Geniuses? We don't know.
Uh, but right now, it's looking a whole lot like EG. And again, that right there, that kill from Necrox at the end, there's a Valkyrie cam outside on the north. I And there's an IQ in play. I think it might have been a conscious bait to leave the camera, allow Joystick that information to take him out with the IQ. Notice that the IQ was prone outside of the, the camera's visual range. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too far into it, but if it was uh, a, a decision made by EG, beautiful. And I mean, Necrox was waiting for somebody to take out that Claymore, which is what Joystick did, and he basically found himself in a position that a lot of players on attack find themselves in with Frost Mats. Do you go for the Frost Mat, or do you go for the person in right. front of you that's gonna be waiting? And it indeed did appear to be a great bait. So, with that said, a 4-2 scoreline for Empire is still definitely doable, but EG is, for the time being, literally beating Empire senseless across this map. Yes. And they will be saved by the fact, Empire will be saved by the fact, the sides will swap at some point. You can try and muster up some momentum, but it didn't help Fnatic much in the previous matchup with Empire involved. And it might not hear final defense for Empires. They'll go back down to Laundry Room. They have not been successful here at all. This will be their third foray to the site. I just want to point out, I think that is a four-wall Electroclaw. That's pretty magnificent. Last time around when we saw this laundry take was when Geo decided to run down through construction, open up the wall, then push on in. There's still a castle in play for Empire, and I think you can justifiably ask how good that castle has actually been for the overall strategy for Team Empire. They might not have a lot of opportunities to switch out other operators, but I gotta say, the castle has not necessarily been the play with what they've been attending. I think the castle has been okay, but it's Geo on the sledge that's been countering it so well. Like, I understand why Empire's being the castle. I agree with you, it's not working. But again, that just, to me, comes down to Geo to using his hammer well. Joystick going once again in the same position over by the master bedroom, opening up these dual holes to be able to look through it with three ADSs <laughs> positioned. That's quite an investment of utility. And they'll put Geo in a position where he might just engage, expecting a cross from Joystick over towards the armory side. It's not the correct read, but he doesn't necessarily know that. Still just waiting and playing by the sandbags as Joystick and dare he fight NBK on this confrontation. This is where an EMP would be very efficient, but they might be saving it for something else entirely. Dan's gonna take down Geo from Meeting Hall. Great job there from Dan. Despite the Meeting Hall wall being opened up by the exothermic charge, he wins his fight, standing firm. This means that any push that might also happen down into the soft walls over by Laundry or Supply will be negated. Dan, three kills! He's the man! Damn, Daniel, but he'll be finished off. As he's fallen, but not completed. Necrox and Canadian now to push on to the site. Necrox will walk down the laundry room stairs. There's a hole above him with Joystick still there. And it does appear that Empire will be able to stop the bleeding for the time being. A beautiful shot from Canadian onto Scyther. Dan is still downed. And, well, it's a 1v5 that has turned into a 1v4. You have to be quite precise here. Canadian will edge on up 40 seconds. He doesn't have a ton of time. He expects Joystick to be playing around this position and he'll be finished off. Empire will be able to regain some hope of keeping this map close and they'll head on into their defense, or their attacking round with EG moving to defense, with Empire taking the round beforehand. Did a great job there from everyone on the side of Empire, but Dan especially. He really just has been landing his shots as that Kaid. I think there are certain players that excel with this dual DMR setup on the Kaid, the pistol and the uh, shotgun there, both effectively the same type of weapon. And Dan is one of them. He makes it look easy. It'll be done. And Karsak, or rather Joystick on this position, on the west side, not being cleared out. That's the really dangerous thing. You know, it would take probably 35 seconds if you want to split one person away from that uh, tower take and move them over to west window to deny the position that Joystick was playing there. But it would certainly be worth it. Um, and I'm sure in hindsight, Evil geniuses will think about that. But all things considered, a 4-2 in the first half, EG are sitting pretty. It wasn't a, it's not a 5-1, sure, but hey, <laughs> they've got to be comfortable. There's no mirror in play and there's no maestro, so you don't what, double reinforce this wall and then you 
Echo? From longer angles. I mean, you do have an Echo in play. Yeah. Sit inside of there, fully reinforced. Empire is bringing a Hibana or a Hibana instead of a Thermite, so you have the longer range ability to open up holes into that wall, providing that there isn't any denial that goes on it. There will likely be a Mute Jammer placed down by Geo, or that at least should be the assumption as it was him reinforcing those walls. Necrox is actually playing the pixel angle uh, oh, on the tower. This is, uh, okay, so usually as an attacker, you can cut off rotation through tower by looking through this, but if Necrox plays it aggressively, he will get the advantage, and he does have it. But he's gonna miss a lot of his shots. Karzeka, though, eats one bullet. EG are well aware that Empire always pushes from tower. Everybody knows that. You as a casual viewer can determine that if you watch a couple matches of Oregon of Empire. So yeah. if you stick some bodies out there and you can control it for quite a bit of time, then maybe force Empire to waste some utility in the process. But EG, after doing a bit of damage to Karzeka, as you had mentioned, from Necrox playing on that angle, they're going to just completely go away. They will run back to the defense or the hold that they have in the defense downstairs and allow Empire to drone out Meeting Hall and then take the rest of Tower. I think another thing that's really noticeable is how slow Empire have been recently on their attacks. Um, just in this tournament, too, it, it does seem like Empire are starting to pump the brakes ever so slightly. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're a fan of Empire or if you're Empire yourself, uh, themselves. But uh, it is noticeable, and it might be something that evil geniuses are trying to play around with that early retreat. Yeah. I mean, it's not always a bad idea to fall off, too. Yeah. If you, if you know that you've done what you needed to do, maybe do some damage to somebody, maybe waste some time, even maybe waste some drones. That's all you need from that altercation. Now, down below, inside of what is called blue or tarps, Scyther had droned out Young. He loses the drone in the process, but then a smoke canister will come on out. Young to his detriment, will not be able to run out as there is a Claymore in place that will stop him. And what a nice shot on the Canadian as that wall will blow open. And I don't know if he was aware of the fact that he had been spotted and seen. And there's another one that's gonna go and it's Young. Oh, no. And it's Joystick there and Empire absolutely firing up the war machine at this point. All of that stems from the one Excaros from Habana in Meeting Hall, opening this hole right here to kill Canadian. If that hadn't happened, Canadian would still hold the hold tower. And if Canadian were holding tower, then we would see Young still holding blue. I believe there's still at least one Yokai in play from NVK, and you've got two ACOGs as well, so you can play a farther angle if you need to. It's gonna be Necrox sitting by that wash basin with an ACOG on his own and a deployable shield there to possibly take and attract some bullets, with Geo playing the much closer angle. And all of Empire will push from the tower, unsurprisingly, you expect that to happen. Still has it. Necrox is there just waiting for somebody to greet him, but nobody is taking the fight for the time being, and the MP will go off as the plant from Shepard will be attempted. And there's a Yokai in place, but it will get shot out. And this is Empire possibly being able to seize control of the site. Down goes Hibana, and EG will take two kills, but Geo falls, and he'll be finished off by Karzeka. Successful Diffuser will go down from Empire in their very first round and their very first attack. They won't be able to get out of there, but Karzeka goes to NVK as well. Scyther and Shepard will retreat to Bunker, and they'll just sit and wait and try to watch that Diffuser as NVK will move on up very very patiently. The IQ gets spotted in Scyther. Two massive kills. You need that if your Empire. You'll close the gap, setting a good pace and a good tone for their attack. And EG will fall short on Laundry Supply Room with Empire now taking two in a row. So that's 3-4 now. Empire still at the disadvantage, but they're, like you say, closing the gap. It's looking good. This is the Empire we're used to seeing on Oregon. It's gonna to be top floor defense from Evil Geniuses now to adjust based on what we've been seeing. The basement's not fantastic. So the C4 mid air, by the way, that, uh, yeah, he still had it. It actually got shot out of the air by Empire, as you just witnessed there on the replays. Beautiful job uh, by Empire salvaging that. It almost would have been a plant denial, which would have been cool. But not the case for Evil Geniuses. Great lockout from, e, uh, from Empire, isolating tower, and then actually one of their more efficient takes recently. Props to them for that. Looks like it's going to be a top floor defense here from Evil Geniuses. Why not put Empire's attacks to the test, right? Yeah, figure out what you're dealing with. I mean, basement, obviously, Empire takes tower again. Go figure. Yeah. Um, EG fell off of it, I think a little bit too early, but probably the right call. And now they're probably going to expect a tower take again 
from Empire, but this time they'll have a little bit more distance from it. It's not uncommon for EG to also perch a couple defenders up on the top of tower in T3, and with the Kappa Tau not available, that's still a valuable or a, you know a viable strategy for EG to do just that. The asphyxiating bolts from Capital make it hell to defend that third floor of tower, but I mean, you don't have that. It's a tool that Empire will be without, not just through the first map, but the second map, and will likely be the attacking ban as well on Clubhouse. Long range and spades here for Evil Geniuses as they'll bring two ACOGs this time, and unsurprisingly, it'll be a tower take from Empire. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Canadian is inside of Attic. And if that wall leading all the way over to Tower is opened up, it's possible that Canadian will be able to see a member of Empire. And would you look at that? The wall's not open, but it's soft. This might be a trap. It's an opportunity, too, at the same time. Canadian is going to open up 51 window, or highway window, some call it. Going to go for a free fire. It actually takes out some of the Excaros thanks to this unreinforced wall. We'll go back for more. Does manage to take out enough to deny a crouch hole. So that's pretty good from Canadian. And that's huge because there's only one set of XK Rose left. It's a soft wall. You know that if you put them down, well, there's going to be a problem. And you can shoot away at the wood, but if the studs still remain, you won't be able to crawl through it. And that therein lies the problem. Looks like it's going to be a prone hole that's situated on the other side of the attic in a position in which if somebody wants to shoot it from EG, they will be very vulnerable. And well, EG has decided better of it. They're not going to be there contesting Attic at all. They've done the damage that they required, taken the only hard breach away, but keep in mind there's a sledge on the board. So if Karzeka wants to, he can just go and open it on up. That's not what he's going to do for the time being. He's going to try and figure out if there's anybody playing inside of dorms. Heavy emphasis being placed here on dorms from the Empire, and it's going to be oh! a triple for oh! NVK! Oh! Absolutely beautiful! Scream into your mic! Scyther does shut down MVK, but it's damage done. And Evil Geniuses in such a tremendous lead. They call it a highway, and MVK was cruising, Michael, on that one. Yeah. Incredible effort, and Empire allowed them this opportunity to get back into the game, though. Two kills. They'll finish off MVK, and then additionally take out Canadian. Now Necrox, too! MVK's effort is being squandered for the time being, and now Scyther is inside of Dorms. This could get very messy for EG. They'll need to hang on for the time being. Oh. But Young, a beautiful shot. And where is Dan as he might expose himself? He'll find it, but they trade it off. EG will take that round, propelling themselves forward by one. Safe to say, NVK will save the day. And it was a beautiful play. Oh, baby, a triple. Evil geniuses. Absolutely beautiful round there, and all stemming from NVK's run out on highway to get three kills. Nice and easy. This is absolutely wonderful. Empire seemed like such a strong team, and they still do, but this right here, oh man. Triple kill. Yeah, you can hear it in all its guttural <laughs> magnificence. There's the shutdown, but it's a given, right? Can't really question it. That shot right there from Young also, that shot saved the match and the round as well. He managed to win an engagement that I think it's safe to say he should not have won. Uh, it was Young in the disadvantage when it comes to the peaker advantage. He was actually the one being peaked, and he still managed to land that shot beautifully onto the head of his opponent inside of dorms. Now, this is curious. Another thing, Scyther was in dorms with the diffuser in hand, and he decided to go hunting. That might be a pretty, well, I mean, it, it was a mistake. In, it, it, we know that, but he obviously didn't know what was dealing or uh, what he was dealing with in his proximity. He wanted to be safe, I get that, but man, unfortunately that he didn't even try to fake it out. So, basement defense here from Evil Geniuses. They have not been able to make this work just yet. Well, they've only tried one time. So that's, that's not really a, a great record to reference. Empire going for a tower take, it looks like. Again, based just solely on the spawns. It looks like Evil Geniuses are actually going to contest it this time around. Necrox finds himself at T2, going down to T1. No, nope, back up to T2. He's <laughs> decisive as to what he's trying to accomplish here, but he's playing on the tower stairs, waiting for an engagement. Mounting pressure on Empire here as they see this game slowly slipping away from them, and the trophy as well. 
As it's very easy for them to take control of tower when there's no real presence from EG. Down goes Scyther. I don't know what the IQ was attempting. Uh -oh. oh, there you go, inside of Bunker. Just pushing on in, but Young was in this exact position before. Right, he had to have known this was going to happen. Scyther with a pre-fire, but he loses the fight anyway. Canadian is still playing that position we saw to cover uh, Young's, well, flank, and... It's just everything's working for, uh, for uh, Evil Geniuses now. And Scyther was the one who saved the day last time, was able to dispatch all of the electronics. He got the yokais as well, and then was the one to collect the final two kills on this push last time. That's a damning kill for EG and a big loss for Empire. Additionally, Dan opening up this wall where Canadian was playing, that was a big difference maker. And the ex Kairos look like they will go down and well, there's a mute there. It appears they'll shoot away at it. And I don't know what's going on, whether the EMP just did not go off or not, but EG looks to be able to have a bit of fortune and luck on their side here. Yeah, it looks like the mute jammer might have saved things there. Well placed by Geo, if that's the case. And now Empire in dire straits. They've only got a minute left, and where are they attacking? What's the plan here? They will just literally need to beat EG in straight up fights, coming down either the stairs or possibly dropping one of the hatches. And EG knows that this is what they, what they have to do. If EG chooses to peek this, then the disarray that we currently see Empire in oh. will be dove upon! And two huge kills from Evil Geniuses, as Empire will now decide to take to the back stairs. Canadian and Harry Potter, and he's working with some magic as he finds yet another, no, the down on Karzeka, but they'll know that he'll have to be picked back up, picked back up as Karzeka will revive Shepard. 30 seconds left, and four members of EG with the dock still on the board. You have to drop through this hatch, and it will might be to your undoing. A drone will go out as there's still some precious time for Empire to get some information. It'll be a split push now as Shepard heads towards the main lobby, and he has the front stairs to go down. If Karzeka drops and misses his shots, then it will put it all on the shoulders of Shepard, who now goes over towards the meeting hall. Shotgun out! Oh, Young will pick one off, but Shepard turns around. His position noted. Two kills, five seconds. He needs to get that diffuser down. He'll be incredibly vulnerable. And it'll be the Yokai drone! And Nathan Valenti, who will push EG to match point. Map number two, and Evil Geniuses have already taken map number one. So this is it. Empire have to win every round from here on out to get us to OT. That's three total if they want to get to map number three and then also win in OT itself. This hold inside of construction, blue and by Harry Potter, is what allowed Evil Geniuses to take that round. An absolutely beautiful counter, specifically catered and tailored to Empire's take from tower and construction. You just cannot get more directly countered than that. Beautiful job by EG. It worked this time because of one change. That was the Mute Jammer placed in the hallway where Canadian was trying to play. That Mute Jammer denied the Xcaros. When the Xcaros was denied, the position that both Canadian and Young were playing made so much more potent. And, well, there wasn't a whole lot Empire could do to adjust. They were unsure what to do when a construction tower take doesn't work for them. It's just so reliably worked for Empire in the past. Absolutely masterful play as well from Canadian down below to read into it and push on up as the ADS did their job, not just preventing the flashbangs from going off, but also giving away the position here. And now, the place at which Empire always entries from on their map with the championship and the trophy on the line with a hint of humor and irony. It'll be a tower take. Geo priming the windows for a possible jump out over on dorm side as two minutes and 45 seconds could separate us from a trophy celebration here in Milan. Empire bringing the Nomad, the operator they banned so frequently to help with the runouts. Clearing ADSs with the flashbangs. Right call, one ADS cleared. Still one though, in existence. Joystick, aware of this? is going to keep on clearing. Canadian playing behind a shield on T3. It's a very dangerous position to hold. Karzek is looking for a rotation on the main stairs. Canadian knows he's been droned out. He knows his position's been given away, but he's relying on the... Oh no, Young! Gets a free pick, but Shepard will 
shut him down. That's that an excellent refrag. Sledge, the grenades are gone as well. And Joystick taking a beating up on Repel with Canadian behind this deployable shield. You still have the explosives from Scyther as Necrox triggers one of those air jabs. His position given away, but he manages to get back in. He gets knocked over, but still can get back in. But still the sound will go down. Waiting for possible vault out here from Geo as he watches the windows and Canadian knows he's under fire. He doesn't know what position that he's going to need to play off of. Canadian's taking a lot of fire here, but he's already wasted a bunch of time. He goes for the pre-fire and cannot land the shots. Joystick shuts down Canadian, and that's T3 control for Empire. So crucial on a tower defense. They're not gonna repel in immediately though. Necrox is in T2 trying to contest. All of it falls to his shoulders now, as Geo is not in a position to assist, nor is MPK a run out, but ill-advised. Scyther shuts down Necrox, and it looks like Team Empire have control of T3. MPK trying to fight back though from T2 and he'll be shut down as well. It's just Geo. C4 goes out in vain, but it will find one as the attempted vault from Dan puts him just too high and he catches that explosive. The air jab outside is going to put Geo on the floor, but he will finally be finished off by Scyther and Team Empire keep themselves in this match. 6-4 still favor to G2, or rather EG, oh my. It happens to the best of us. You're so used to saying it, right? Yeah. The crowd gathering around in front of evil geniuses as they will sit on the precipice of this championship for the remainder of the game. And overtime in order for Empire to win. Tower doesn't work, but Dorms unlocks. So EG will have a more conventional site on which they hope to win this trophy here in Milan. And that's the, that's the thing. You lose a tower defense, but so what? It's a tower defense. The strategy that EG set up was beautiful, but it just was perfectly countered by Empire. They know how to attack tower. This right here, this kill from Joystick was the, one of the most important, being able to take control of T3. Scyther, there was always one player from Empire holding this rotation that Scyther's on right this second. Whether it was Scyther or Shepard or Karzeka, it was always somebody, and that is such a crucial play on the side of Empire, being able to cut off that rotation. Now, Moving forward, Evil Geniuses, again, as you said, top floor. Taking their tactical timeout. Yeah, they get to think through what they want to do on this last, potentially last, round. They're set up so very well to take this. You know, imagine the pressure that's on the shoulders of both of these teams at this moment. Yeah. This point in time. EG coming the closest to a championship that they've been sitting on match point, sitting on championship point. They never sat on championship point against G2 at the Invitational. Yeah. I think, I think the pressure is enormous, that's for sure. But Evil Geniuses is the only team out of North America to ever really come this truly, truly this close. And they're the only team for North America to have ever really actually won an international event like this. So. If anyone is going to do it, it would be EG. And to be honest, the way that they've been playing, you know, they've got this, this huge pedigree, this wonderful play from past events. But I said it earlier on Bang, and I'll say it again here now on Oregon. I believe this is the best evil geniuses we have ever seen. The level of play that they are putting out is just unlike what I'm used to seeing from them. It just, it's just above and beyond. There's a calmness from them, right? Certainly. Eventually it gets to a point where you just lose so damn much that you stop caring and you play a little bit more light. I think that's a good way of putting it. And yeah. Liquid, two teams that came in with very minimal expectations. And I mean, if you think of the hunger that's on the side of EG, these are five players who they can't really be as affable and as carefree as those other teams. They always want to win. They yeah. want to be the best. In this case, they are one round away from proving that this season they were and they'll go to the dorm side. Just like Clockwork, Empire will once again take control of Tower. And for EG, there's nobody nearby. Canadian is the closest. He's inside a meeting hall playing on that vigil. I think there's been a lot of doubt put on the shoulders of Evil Geniuses over past events. I think a lot of people have lost faith. It certainly seems that way. And what they're showing us here is just so much reason to regain that faith. Even if even if Empire brings this back, they win in the third map. 
Evil Geniuses are proving themselves again anew, being one of the most, I'd say, prestigious teams in all of Pro League, one of the longest lasting. They're doing it again. An air jab going out from Joystick here on the highway window, as you'd mentioned earlier on. A lot of people call it, what you call it, 51? 51, yeah. Oh! Start things off as Necrox, he'll get... Karzeka gets oh! another! Oh my god, Omar looking for one more! But it's Geo to take down Dan! And Shepard and Scyther are the last two. 90 seconds in, and EG going for broke here. Not Do like this. you believe, Michael? Not like this. What a run out from Necrox. And it seems like Empire can't recover at this point. They're at the double window, waiting and prepped and ready with Geo low on HP. He's on the hunt down below. But you've got both Young and Canadian in a position watching this big window. And Empire have time to work with. They've got a lot of rope. But you know how that metaphor goes. Is simply waiting now for the time being is there's going to be extensive amount of patience and you got to imagine that for eg you want to take these fights you want to take these engagements you've been hitting your shots you know it's possible that's scyther and shepherd shepherd holding that diffuser and you'll put yourself in a position where scyther an incredible player on this team who's been often overshadowed by the members of both joystick as well as karzeka he's going to need to try and protect shepherd and just waiting, as now Canadian is the only member of EG who has not taken a beating now with 30 seconds left. Shepard will watch that big window, and here comes the tension, here comes the push. Down on white stairs, waiting for the vault on in is Canadian. Will he be able to secure the kill? He sees the tracers go, no! Scyther will win the fight, he'll inch his way on up. Geo's gonna be next in line, but this could be a tough shot, and Empire could wrestle away the round. There's Geo just waiting, he doesn't pull the trigger, he sees it, he pops up. Oh no, Geo, you gotta hit your shots! Young will be the last one left. He was so important for FaZe, he turns his back, he's got the pistol, but Shepard will deny the comeback from EG on that round, and the hopes and dreams will wait one more round at minimum. Will we have overtime between these two teams? EG inches away, but they fumble it. It's only gonna take one more round for Empire to push us to OT. And you gotta imagine if they can build up that kind of momentum, they will be able to bring us to map number three. We are so close yet so far for evil geniuses. They have to be able to push this over. You gotta imagine that's all that's running through their mind right now. It comes so close. What a spectacular throw of a round there for EG. It's just the pressure, Michael. Geo doesn't usually miss his shots. He unloaded an entire mag and he missed them all. Didn't really do all that much. EG started out so strong, but they overcommitted just a tiny bit too much. And the nerves, it's the nerves. It's gotta be the nerves. I mean, <laughs> okay, a couple different things. Canadian missing his shots on the stairs there. We saw Geo missing his shots inside of Generator. But apart from that, early peaks lightening up the HP on the side of Evil Geniuses for both Geo and Young. They were getting too aggressive. I mean, 40 seconds left, and you got two people on West Window. In a two versus three, what are you gonna do as Evil Geniuses? Your options are A, peek them aggressively and try to take the fight on the West Window, giving away opportunities to your opponents, or B, wait for the vault. They chose option A, it did not work out. Now Evil Geniuses will go back to the top floor, but you can imagine that run out from Necrox will not be as successful if he commits to it again. That was a power move to take a lead in terms of man count yeah. here from EG. And yeah, Empire's gonna be prepared and ready for this. Laundry and supply room is now open yet again. You could have gone there if you really wanted to, but EG are not gonna risk it. They're gonna go back to dorms. So there's obviously something that they saw that they liked about this defense that this site will work better on. Well, I think that they were pretty confident here on the top floor defense. I think they were very happy with the results. Evil Geniuses knew, know they threw that round. I, I think it's, it's pretty clear. There's no question in their mind. So go back to it, try it again. Don't throw, get that win, deny overtime, and take your earned Season 9 Championship Trophy. When you look at the lineup from EG here, they're still gonna have tons of information. They've got the Valkyrie in play, which has become a staple for them on Oregon over this matchup. And then you've also got Young playing on the Echo. So just in case something goes awry, you don't have the alibi there, you're gonna have the gadget available to spot anybody from Empire. 
And yeah, you're probably not going to knock Empire on their heels with the run out that you did before, so you're going to have to play a little bit more conventional. It'd be like the Jaws clamping down on top of you if Empire is able to push on in and continuously take map control away without you being able to counterpunch. Slow going here from Empire. Haven't made any mistakes, really. Tower control, well in hand. Geo in a position by meeting, and along with Canadian, where they could potentially get a flank off here. Joystick's gonna get the first skill, though. There goes NVK. That is huge. On the Jaeger, he's no longer be able to frag in this round. Empire doing a lot of work with these north windows. They're baiting out these toxic canisters as well from Necrox. It looks like it might have gotten shot out as Joystick is going to continuously flit around the side of the window. He's going to be joined by Karzeka on his right. You got to imagine that NVK should have known that there would be somebody there watching. It might be a mistake that proves to be fatal in this round, and over time would likely go in favor, or bode well, rather, for the chances of Empire, who would have gained full momentum. We'll need three rounds in a row in order to push this one on in. Necrox still doing his best work to try and keep Karzeka off of these windows, and Necrox will jump out! Oh, not again! Take down one! Not again! Oh! Necrox will take out two! But Scyther and Shepard will pick up kills of their own! Geo will put us onto a 2v2! Canadian falls, it'll be all on the shoulders of Geo, as Dan, very low on HP, separated from Shepard. They are miles apart, and Geo will need to be his best asset. He's still got a Nitro Cell in hand, and he'll have four teammates watching and waiting with bated breath to see if he can save it. The newest addition to this evil genius's roster was brought on and heralded as somebody who could possibly change the tide. Pressured from behind, Geo might not be aware that there's a Hibata there. We got Empire going to overtime with EG. Three rounds unanswered, and EG will choke the lead they had. And they'll need to think about that in OT. Beautiful job there from Empire, three in a row. How does it happen? And on top of what Necrox managed to pull off on those north windows. Once again, you are seeing these runouts from EG that are catching Empire off guard, but that's it. Empire are reactive and they're able to get the kills and the people on site for EG have not been doing the job needed to be able to hold it in line. That pick there from Joystick on highway. NVK no longer allowed to do what he wanted to do, but there you go. Oh, Necrox with the double again. But still, Empire putting up enough frags to get themselves just over the hill. Oh, Dan, Dan in particular has been yeah. lights out so far over the second half of this map. So we're gonna be seeing top floor from Evil Geniuses a third round in a row. Two times it looked like EG should have had it. A third time they will go here. Now, I gotta imagine that you go there three times thinking you should have won it the first two, and that's gonna start really wearing away at you. We should have taken that last round, man. We should have taken the round before it. Let's try one more time. When does it become bashing your head against the problem? It's back on the old reliable and Canadian has actually taken some damage, likely from an impact grenade. Yeah. Alibi has used both of hers, so it's likely from that. There's the calm before the storm here, as now we go into a position where one of these teams will find themselves on match point. Empire has not been on match point, period. Yeah, they've been on the back foot through this entire series. Empire has actually not had a lead since round number three of map one. So it has been EG very firmly in the driver's seat. And EG's greatest nemesis has not often been G2, as people say, but themselves. The ability to persevere despite the pressure that they find upon themselves and not falter when the going gets tough. Yeah, if we're being honest, this map and thus this match probably should have been over quite a few rounds ago. Yeah. Opportunities given to Empire, though, and Empire will take that. They are excellent at seizing every opportunity presented. Oh, here's interesting. There's a camera inside of Tower, and it's going to survey and do some surveillance work on the members of Empire. But there doesn't really seem to be any possible follow-up. And I'm wondering if this cam is here for a late rotate to possibly run out of Tower. We saw the air jabs get deployed, though, in those positions at a Claymore down as well on the highway window, meaning that Empire are going to double up on preventing any possible play from that specific angle. That means NBK will likely just stay inside for the time being, and EG are not going to be given the same opportunities to run out and catch Empire off guard the way that they have in the previous couple rounds. Evil Genius is doing their best to hold on to dorms. 
not using the vertical play. But oh, there's Dan with a kill onto MVK, and there's elsewhere a kill onto Canadian. And now Evil Genius is on a serious back foot. That was, MV, that was MVK all the way out on the roof, He's connecting tower to armory. That is a deep run. Trying to make a rotation. And I can understand, but he got caught out from Dan, and I don't... I Bad call. I think we will look back on that with great skepticism. Yes. Necrox patrolling the big window. That is also a very brazen move for him to do. As Geo down below will try to get back up. You know how hard it is to hold off this site when you have lost control, and retaking it can be very, very difficult. Oh, no! Necrox gives himself up for free, and there's another now! Empire are just crushing EG at every opportunity, and a pre-fire on the Geo will find its target! And for the first time on this map, Empire will sit on match point. One evil geniuses began to throw. Four in a row for Team Empire. A decisive run and an evil geniuses that seems unlike what we were seeing not a few minutes prior. So the last couple rounds have gotten progressively worse for Evil Geniuses. They used their tactical timeout earlier on, and I wonder how much of that is just them losing the plot now and losing confidence. You've got to imagine, this is now four rounds in a row for Empire. We have Clubhouse up next, and you're demoralized now if you're Evil Geniuses, but imagine how demoralized you are going to Clubhouse, knowing that you had an opportunity to put this one away. You could have locked this game up 20 minutes ago. If, if Evil Geniuses do not finish this, it's going to be very difficult to come back on map number three. I just, I, ooh. Evil Geniuses are right now their own worst enemy. They're missing a lot of shots, and they're making a lot of serious errors in their positional skills. And we just weren't seeing that, map one. We weren't seeing that for the majority of this second map. EG is getting away with this right now, in large part also because Joystick has not been anywhere near as effective as he has been previously. He's bottom fragging on this team. You are winning this because their best player is not performing at the same standards that you'd expect. And credit goes to EG for shutting him down. But it's still the fact that you are playing this closely against a team that has one of the greatest players in the world at the moment in Joystick, batting way below average. It's not a given that he's gonna be able to do that for you on Clubhouse. And additionally, we saw that he just ran over Fnatic on Clubhouse. So, you find yourself in a very tough position. And now EG will have to go on attack. They were very good on attack. They won four of those two rounds. All right, Empire did the exact same. Empire won their attacking round. But man, the confidence that EG had is all gone. Yeah. It certainly feels like a third map. It is looking like that way, yeah. Evil geniuses are gonna have to do something pretty crazy to change our minds on that point. Or not to change our minds, honestly, just to, to win. That's all that really matters to them right now. And they're so close yet so far, it feels. They've got great setup here, tower control. Gonna isolate that flank, open up attic likely. Once they've done that, it should be a north windows take. Something that we've seen quite a lot from both teams. Unless there's a trade here, you gotta suspect that the very first kill that comes out is gonna set the pace for the entire round and likely end up being the deciding factor here. Yeah. Joystick down below has been a threat lurking over by the dining hall, and unless there's some form of run-out denial, it appears to be Necrox there in the exact same position as before, and Joystick will be able to get a run-out and possibly a kill onto Young. Necrox is still just waiting patiently, and Joystick might be aware of this. It really depends on what he's doing. He's lurking down below, he's inside a kitchen. He's not gonna take the fight, at least it doesn't appear so for the time. Being. There's six, yeah, playing kitchen, trying to play safe. Necrox could challenge it, but it looks like I, I think he just wants to deny the run out. Shepard inside a dorm, such an important player for his team. He needs to hold on to this position for as long as possible. Two gas canisters left, and he will be able to fall back. No one on West Window from Evil Geniuses is a huge mistake, and that's going to allow Shepard maneuverability, potentially sustainability because of that. Nate goes out, 
does not detonate where it needs to, and Shepard persists. Shepard doesn't even take a single point of damage there as now Canadian is moving over to West Window. Another frag grenade will go out, and Shepard is under fire from two separate angles. The frag grenade will take quite a bit of damage into Shepard, and there you go, Karzeka finds Young and Empire looking for round number five in a row. This is one of the best comebacks that we have seen given the adversity, given the pressure, given everything that's on the line for Empire, at least for the time being and they are in the driver's seat quite firmly. The only hard destruction from EG is gone. And then Necrox, who had been on flank watch so long, will need to wander on in. It was his job to find Joystick. He won't be able to do it. NBK will find Dan, but Karzeka finds NBK. Karzeka finds Geo as well. And Necrox, who's been a standout in this matchup, now need to walk up, hitting a goo mine. His position given away. Empire with five in a row will turn around, and it's Empire winning on time. Oh my god, what a performance from them. And EG, battered and bruised, will limp into map number three with Empire in great position to steal this matchup away. Evil geniuses tossing it away. Empire seizing the opportunity. A beautiful comeback from Empire. All credit to them. But evil geniuses were their own worst enemy in the second half of that map. Yeah, that's a heartbreaking defeat if I've ever seen one. And we've seen some pretty remarkable comebacks in Pro League with games on the line, trophies on the line, money on the line. And this is an entire region that has been starved for recognition for years now. Europe has long dominated the Pro League scene and Empire have found the spark to come back into a position where most people would likely assume they are the favorite on Clubhouse, knowing the disposition that Evil Geniuses will have heading into this, this absolutely ultimate map now. You can't even say penultimate because that's exactly what Oregon was. And like we said, you're gonna need a reverse sweep here for Empire. EG knows that feeling. Uh, it's going to be a really tricky comeback for the Evil Geniuses, that's for sure. That map, there's so many moments where EG had it, had it, and it slipped away. It's heartbreaking for anyone watching. E I mean, I imagine such a great comeback, though, for Empire. Got to be really instilling a lot of confidence in map number three. It's a little bit of both here, but there's greater viewpoints to look at, and that's exactly what our analysts are for, and they'll take us through map number two.